All right, uh, welcome back. We are discussing India-Canada tensions and uh, we have reported how the External Affairs Minister Subramaniam Jayashankar, speaking at the Arts Institute, did confirm raising the India-Canada tensions with his U.S. counterpart, Anthony Blinken, and also the U.S. NSA, Jake Sullivan, explaining that uh, there is a long history of friction between India and Canada over Khalistani terrorism, and Canada has not acted on India's request to take action against uh, several Khalistani terrorists. More than 20 or 25 requests of extradition have gone to the Canadian government over the years. But uh, let me go across again to Frank Wisner, Michael Kugelman, and, Dawn, uh, and Dan Boardman. Uh, Michael, beginning with you, how do you see this visit of uh, the external affairs minister to Washington meeting key members of the U.S. government in terms of reducing temperatures, reducing tensions between India and Canada? It won't happen overnight, but do you see it paving the way in some sort of fashion? Well, I do think that uh, there might be a role for uh, the Biden administration to play as, uh, as some type of mediator uh, in the sense of trying to uh, quietly, privately pressing both capitals, Ottawa and New Delhi, to uh, at the least ensure that uh, they don't take any new further escalatory steps. I mean, the U.S. government clearly has a, a very strong interest in this crisis winding down uh, as soon as possible. Now, I understand that, uh, you know, India... Uh, may not welcome uh, an, a, a third party uh, intervention, so to speak, and that it tends to prefer that there not be third party interventions in its, uh, in its diplomatic uh, crises. But I do think that there might be a role that the U.S. can play in that regard. And perhaps that was part of the conversations that Jai Shankar had with, with Blinken and perhaps others. You might have heard that, that message from, uh, from the U.S. side to, to try to, you know, gently uh, uh, impress this idea upon um, Jai Shankar that it's, it's, it doesn't serve anyone's interest to escalate anymore. And I will say that there have not been any new escalations, so far as I know, in this crisis over the last, um, over the last day or two. But um, yeah, I think that, it, again, to the extent that, that Jai Shankar spoke about the Canada issue with his U.S. interlocutors, probably was not a very uh, happy, easy conversation. But I don't think that that was the, the, the dominant feature of any of the conversations that he would have had here uh, in, in Washington. All right. Uh, let me also uh, go back to uh, uh, Daniel Boardman. Uh, Daniel, I'd like to ask you about uh, what the external affairs minister said when asked uh, about whether the... Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau raised these allegations on Niger's murder with the Prime Minister during the G20. Jay Shankar said, I've already answered it, and his earlier statement was, was, was that Canada has raised these allegations both privately and publicly. Why do you think, and what prompted Trudeau to go public with these allegations? I can't imagine the, the decision-making process to do this. Um, the only thing that the excuse I would accept from Justin Trudeau as to why he would do something so crazy like this was he was pushed by the five eyes themselves and the Americans and their allies said, OK, there's something real here. You actually have to do it. Um, but it, it, it but why would we do that without being able to put the evidence forward? Like, again, no one wants to the intelligence to, to know, like, were we spying on India? How did we spy on India? Did the Americans spy on India? Can they hack? certain messaging apps that we think are secure. Like, none of this we want to bring into the public because, like, if we have a, a, a method to track, you know, let's say nefarious actors, we don't want to waste that public knowledge on an ally. So that's insane. So I, I don't know why Trudeau would do it at the time he did. Um, someone had to, to tell him that was a bad idea. I mean, the optics look terrible. This is right after his embarrassing India trip himself. So it looks spiteful it, 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 and it just looks like he's doing it in a way that is spiteful and in international relations a lot of time what's more important than the truth is how things are perceived can something be true and the way Trudeau has conducted himself he's he's kind of conducting himself in in a way that indicates that uh, he's probably bluffing um to say the least so why would he do it what the time he did it there is no logical explanation I don't think there's a good explanation um if it came from Canada I, you would at least wait a few months, wait for an investigation to be concluded. Um, I, 
I, I cannot fathom the decision-making process to do this. And I think that's why I'm on Indian TV right now, because I saw them do this and I went ballistic and said, why are they doing this? This makes no sense. So I still have not uh, been able to divinate the motivations of Justin right. Trudeau. And I've been trying for about eight years and, it, and, and, and I find it best to just, just try not to think like him or think his thoughts, because you'll go insane. So um, Justin Trudeau has done something mm. right. crazy. He then later the week did something even crazier. And that's what Canada's talking about. How do they invite a Nazi into parliament? So this is the cycle of Justin Trudeau. He does mm. something. Why does he do this? We all freak out. There's a media frenzy. He does something else that's incredibly crazy. We go on to the next thing and so on and so forth until 2020. OK. All right. All right. Uh, Ambassador Wisner, coming back to you. Uh, Again, I found this a little interesting in terms of uh, the tone and the body language. When at the Hudson Institute, he was asked about these allegations made by Canada. Uh, Jay Shankar took a jibe and laughed and said, for Canada, the US is the global south. But on a, on a more serious note, the fact that someone in the Five Eyes was spying on India. Yes, countries do spy on, e India, on uh, each other. Even friendly countries do at times. But the fact that somebody in the Five Eyes was monitoring Indian diplomats very, very closely, uh, the communications were being monitored. How does this, in the short run, impact relations between India, Canada and the United States? Who are you directing that question to? Uh, Ambassador, to you. Hello? Ambassador Vizna. Oh, is that question directed to me? Uh, Correct. Assuming you can hear me, um, I, I'm afraid that I take issue with what Mr. Boardman said. I have a great deal more respect for the Canadian government and its processes. I suspect the Prime Minister's decision to go public was also driven by the fact that the issue had been raised and had moved sufficiently between Canada and India among many agencies of the Canadian government and that the Prime Minister faced a serious risk of it going public. And rather than have it go public in an uncontrolled manner, he uh, uh, made the matter public himself to control the media uh, reaction and the diplomatic action that followed. So I, I tend to think it's less a knee-jerk than a calculated move to control a dangerous situation. Uh, but Ambassador, Ambassador Wisner, just one quick question which I was trying to put to you is that the fact that someone in the Five Eyes was spying on Indian diplomats, monitoring Indian diplomats, how does that impact relations between India, United States and Canada in the short term? The, the, we don't know enough about the case and the facts. And if those are going to come out, they'll come out in due course. But to say that we know that there was direct intelligence operations directed against the Indian government is to take what we know today too far. We don't know. Could there have been electronic uh, intercepts of communications between uh, private parties, public parties, I have no idea, and I don't think anybody does. So let's not jump to conclusions. The fact is, the Jai Shankar visit right. here was one more step in a major undertaking between the United States and India. The relationship has now moved uh, with the Prime Minister's visit here, with Biden's uh, visit to India, Biden's uh, the American government's agreements on a broad range of issues with India, the work done inside the global south, there is a huge agenda. And it's that agenda that was the focus of the Jai Shankar visit to Washington. The Canada matter, while serious, was right. not the centerpiece and not the most important work that had to be done. It would have been, as I think this conversation reveals, okay. something handled on the side. And it needs to be handled on the side between New okay. Delhi and Ottawa and taken out of the public uh, debate. 
All right, uh, we've run out of time, but uh, that's what uh, Michael Kugelman also said, that this was about broadening Indo-US ties, speeding up the momentum between the two countries, and also about G20 deliverables. Thank you once again, uh, Michael Kugelman, Ambassador Wisner, Daniel Broadman, for joining us here on Global Eye. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of the show. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.